Hey, we are in First Samuel chapter 5 and 6, and we're going to see some, it would have been cool to be Samuel because he sees some crazy stuff or hears about some crazy stuff. And I'm glad that he has written a lot of this, all this stuff down because uh, I bet you he could just talk for hours and hours about stories that he has heard about. And today is, is a crazy thing that takes place. It, it happens from the rebellion of the Israelites and um, uh, God deals with it the way that, that he does. And so let's just jump into uh, chapter five. And reading out of the uh, contemporary English version. The Philistines, remember from the last chapter, the Philistines stole the Ark of the Covenant. The Philistines took the sacred chest from near Ebenezer to the town of Ashdod, and they brought it into the temple of their god Dagon and put it next to the statue of Dagon, which they worshipped. When the people of Ashdod got up early the next morning, they found their statue was lying face down on the floor in front of the sacred chest. They put the statue back where it belonged, but early the next morning, it had fallen over again and was lying face down on the floor in front of the chest. The body of the statue was still in one piece, but its head and its hands were broken off and were lying on the stone floor in the doorway. This is the reason the priests and everyone else step over that part of the doorway when they enter the temple of Dagon and they Ashdod. The Lord caused a lot of trouble for the people of Ashdod and their neighbors. He made sores break out all over their bodies and everyone was in a panic. Finally, they said, the God of Israel did this. He is the one who caused all this trouble for us and our God Dagon. We've got to get rid of this chest. The people of Ashdod had all the Philistine rulers come to Ashdod and they asked them, what can we do with the sacred chest that belongs to the God of Israel. Send it to Gath, the rulers answered. But after they took it there, the Lord made sores break out on everyone in town, and the people of Gath were frightened. So they sent the sacred chest to Ekron. But before they could take it through the town gates, the people of Ekron started screaming. They brought the sacred chest that belongs to the God of Israel. It will kill us and our families too. The people of Ekron called for another meeting of the Philistine rulers and told them, Send this chest back where it belongs. Then it won't kill us. Everyone was in a panic because God was causing a lot of people to die. And those who had survived were suffering from their sores. They all cried to their gods for help. After the sacred chest had been in Philistia for seven months, the Philistines called in their priests and fortune tellers and asked, what should we do with the sacred chest? Tell us how to send it back where it belongs. Don't send it back without a gift, the priests and fortune tellers answered. Send along something to Israel's God to make up for the taking of the chest in the first place. Then you will be healed and you will find out why the Lord was causing you so much trouble. What should we send, the Philistines asked. The priests and fortune tellers answered. There are five Philistine rulers and they have all had the same disease that you have. So make five gold models of the sores and five gold models of the rats that are wiping out your crops. If you honor the God of Israel with this gift, maybe he will stop causing trouble for you and your gods and your crops. Don't be like the Egyptians and their king. They were stubborn. But when, the Israel, but when Israel's God was finished with them, they had to let Israel go. Get a new cart, two cows that have young calves and that have never pulled a cart. Hitch the cows to the cart, but take the calves back to their barn. Then put the chest on the cart, put the gold rats and sores into a bag and put it on the cart next to the chest. Then send it on its way. Watch to see if the chest goes on up the road to the Israelite town of Beth Shemesh. If it goes back to its own country, you will know that it was the Lord who made us suffer so badly. But if the chest doesn't go back to its own country, then the Lord had nothing to do with the disease that hit us. It was simply bad luck. The Philistines followed their advice, and they hitched up the two cows to the cart, but they kept the calves in the barn. Then they put the chest on the cart, along with the bag that had the gold rats and sores on it. The cows went straight up on the road toward Beth Shemesh, mooing as they went. The Philistine rulers followed them until they got close to Beth Shemesh. 
the people of Beth Shemesh were harvesting their wheat in the valley. When they looked up and saw the chest, they were so happy that they stopped working and started celebrating. The cows left the road and pulled the cart into a field that belonged to Joshua from Beth Shemesh. And they stopped up beside a huge rock. Some men from the tribe of Levi were there. So they took the chest off the cart and placed it on the rock. Then they did the same thing with the bag of gold rats and sores. A few other people chopped off the cart and made a fire. They killed the cows and burned them as a sacrifice to the Lord. And after that, they offered more sacrifices. When the five rulers of the Philistines saw what had happened, they went back to Ekron that same day. That is how the Philistine sent gifts to the Lord to make up for taking the sacred chest. They sent five gold swords, one each of their towns, Ashdod, Gaza, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron. They also sent one gold rat for each walled town and for every village that the five Philistine rulers controlled. The huge stone where the Levites set this chest is still there in Joshua's field as a reminder of what happened. Some of the men of Beth Shemesh looked inside the sacred chest and the Lord God killed 70 of them. This made the people of Beth Shemesh very sad and they started saying, no other God is like our God, is like the Lord. Who can go near him and still live? We'll have to send the chest away from here, but where can we send it? They sent messengers to tell the people of Kiriath and Jerim, the Philistines have sent back the sacred chest. Why don't you take it and keep it there for you? So we see um, what has taken place and what God is doing. Here is a... Um, Another replica, another version of maybe what the uh, sacred chest looked like. Uh, it's obvious that God doesn't want people messing with this stuff. And uh, the Philistines messed with it, and they got these tumors. Uh, the Israelites messed with it, and they died. Um, and so we have to take control of what God gives us. Here is the path. This is what Israel is looking like now. Starting in Shiloh, uh, the Philistines are ruling the territory by the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, but you see the traveling of the ark of where it went while it was with the Philistines into back to Beth Shemesh. Uh, and then finally to Kiriath Jerim, where it sits until the time of David. What can we take from this? Um, God has his guidelines. And the reality is God can take care of himself. Uh, God took care of his, the, the sacred chest, the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, he can do it just fine. He can do it without us, but he doesn't want to do it without us. He wants to do it with us. He wants us to be a part of his plan. He wants us to enjoy the ride that God is enjoying. Um, and, and so I want to encourage you to do that, to enjoy the ride and do as God asks because uh, the ride is great. Have a great day.